adventurers, and welcome to Skill Tree, where we learn how to do just about everything. So we are fresh off of a really interesting trip. It was it was a trip, I'll tell you what. So the place we're talking about is actually, it's in Pennsylvania, yeah? Yeah, it's like the Pennsylvania-Ohio border. Yep, and it is called Pensick. It's actually a huge um, event that's held by the SCA, which is the Society for Creative Anachronism. You got there. Right? I got there. It's a lost... <laughs> we doing one of these. So some kind of leadway on, on how we got there. We're, we're, first of all, completely new to any of this. We're not part of the SCA. We didn't even know it existed. No, I, yeah. I, and once you realize what it is, I hope you're as amazed as I am that this thing goes on every year. This was the 49th one. I think so, yeah. Um, it goes on every year, and we're, I'm like this many years old before I've even heard of it, which is before incredible. Before you've even heard of the SCA. I mean, yeah. It kind of falls into like a lot of the stuff that we look into and are interested in and it's just never come across before. Mm -hmm. So probably the biggest things you would see on the SCA is like big like night battles, right? Mm -hmm. Like where you see those things where, where people go out in full armor and Which, they fight with each other. So side note, if you've ever seen actual full blade armor before, it's big. It is impressively like, big. It's, it's yeah. like, it looks like they've become a whole second person <laughs> very layered on top. Huge people. The helmets are like this big, the uh. bigger than, it, than you think they are. But that's, like I said, only a really small portion of it because a lot mm -hmm. of it has to do with like a love of history, a love of crafting and making things. It Dance, is, community, all things yeah. really like that have happened historically recreated in this historical anachronism. So what we're going to do today is give you like a super newcomer outsider's look to what this world was like to just kind of jump into with like zero primer whatsoever um, and see if it's something you might be interested in. Sound good? Sound good. Jazz? Jazz. Let's get to it then. So first things first, how did we get introduced to it in the first place? Um, so if you watched those past videos of us going to our first LARP, which we also did, this has been a busy year for us. It's actually. been really busy. Actually, it's been a few months. Uh, we, we, we didn't even like travel much in the beginning of the year for skill tree stuff at least. Yeah. And then we just suddenly did everything. Everything. Um, but you would have heard during those videos of somebody that we call Ash, that was her character name in mm -hmm. that LARP. We got to know her really well and she actually invited us there. So that's- She's like, you like this? Come do this. Come do this. <laughs> and then we showed up and it was like massive. Yeah, okay. Let me set the scene for you when she says massive, right? So we're driving, it's been a nine hour drive because we're coming from Massachusetts. Mm -hmm. um, so we're driving down the highway and all of a sudden there's a break in the trees and there is just- For miles. A city of tents. For liter literal miles. Yeah, it is Thousands amazing. of tents and you can't even see all of them because half of them are in the trees. Every year, mm -hmm. a whole city of tents so, just pops up somewhere. So they're typical attendants is in the 10,000s. Mm -hmm. This was the first event that they've had since COVID happened. So right. it was only around like 8,000, which is small for them. Right. 8,000, let that sink in. <laughs> it's a big old, and it's a two week event, right? Mm -hmm. So we have a, like Peace Week and War Week. War Week's when they, they get together and f like they have these wars. massive yeah. battles in like genuine metal armor and like weapons. It's a it's a thing. It's a thing to behold. It is really mm -hmm. impressive to watch. We straddled those two weeks. So we came mm -hmm. in on Thursday of Peace Week. Middle week. Yeah. yeah. Thursday of Peace Week went all through the weekend and we got to see kind of the, the first half of War Week, mm -hmm. which was just- Have a good war. It, it, yeah, it was, yeah. That you hear that a lot. I hope you're having a good war, which, <laughs> you know, that's not a thing you hear very often, right? I think it first kind of dawned on us on how big it was when we we saw that opening and then we we kind of drive up the little long drive to get to there uh -huh. and it was like a what do we do now <laughs> in a moment <laughs> where are we yeah our very first interaction is very much gonna mirror the rest of our interactions yeah so we we came up and we're like where do we park and immediately they're like, just park here, just do this, whatever. And we go to Troll. And it's we got there kind of late because it was a nine-hour drive. Troll, by the way, you got to pay the toll at Troll mm -hmm. to get in, which yeah, is kind of fun, like a bridge troll. <laughs> so not only is everybody really friendly, like right away you tell them, you know, they're like, cool, here's what we're going to do. We're going to walk you through the whole thing. Mm -hmm. But it is also, throughout the entire trip, in fact, the most organized 
like well run, even down to like there's porta potties everywhere. They were uh-huh. they were the cleanest. They were cleaned every single morning. They were so clean. All that it, it was honestly the best run event I've ever been to. Mm-hmm. Really well done. So yeah, like they even have like a whole system built just for newcomers. Like mm-hmm. you can go to Pensick and go to classes the entirety mm-hmm. of the two weeks. Yep. Just for people new to either Pensick or the SCA or anything like that. We didn't go to any of them. No. Because so, we're bad at being new people. <laughs> not, not only that, but we are like the newest of the new. So most of the people who are new to there are at least part of a local SCA club. <laughs> so every every person we met were like, this is our first Pentec. They're like, really? And we're like, actually, this is our first SCA event in general. And they're like, wow, you ain't big. <laughs> yeah. How we do here at Skill so, Tree. We just go for it. But like he said, like there was organization and this welcoming atmosphere in just every single thing you did, which you'll hear us Everything. talk about a lot. But it was almost like just by being at Penzik, you were part of the family. Like we, we went to the newcomers thing, uh, but we were too late in the day. Right. So they just had like the general information, uh, like help desk. Right. And the guy there, when he found out it was our new first time, he's like, all right, listen, this is where you want to camp. Here's where my camp is at any time. If you have any questions or anything, you come find me and I'll help you out. And that became a reoccurring theme. Yeah. So there was one point we kind of camped in this big open area just at mm-hmm. the foot of a hill. And there was this like no joke storm rolling in. Like wind was whipping. We had, mm-hmm. it, had just had our tent set up. It was it was looking real kind of ugly there. Um, and this completely different camp behind us because you can stay in encampments where there's mm-hmm. a, a large group of people who stay together. Or you can go into a singles camp, which is what we did, yep. where you're not part of any group. So you're just you, on the edge, go. scared. Yeah, and alone. just scared and alone, <laughs> trying, trying to figure everything out. But they saw the storm coming, and they looked at us, and they, the, the kind of matron of that camp. Yeah, she just walked over. She's like, "Are you guys gonna be okay?" Yeah, she's like, "Are you, are you new here?" And we're like, "Yeah, we're new. This is like our first time. Anything?" She goes, "Okay, hold on a sec." She goes and she gets two other people from her camp who are like more experienced with tents and stuff, and she's like, "Can you inspect their tent and make sure it's not gonna be blown away or anything?" Mm-hmm. And they, they run. Us through like like fix your tarp here. You should worry about this area in the ground because there's a little uh-huh. dip that's next to your tent. Make sure the sides are weighed down. Yeah, they like, stayed with us to watch the clouds to see which way the wind was going to yeah, turn. Yeah, to see if for, it, we would us. need to be worried. Yeah, it was again the most welcoming. Yeah, even uh, even even as the clouds were going away, they're like, it doesn't look like it's going to hit you, and your tent's really sturdy and whatever. But just in case, if anything ever, ever happens to your tent, we this is our camp. These are our names. Come find us. You are welcome at any point yep. to weather the storm with us or even just to come say hi. Yeah, and most of those those camps, they have kind of like a great hall set up, mm-hmm. which is a huge, like, canopy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so they're like, you can come. You can huddle in there. You can hang out with us. You can eat. Um, it mm-hmm. really – so I think that's a good time to, to get us into, like, the people who – basically adopted us and helped us through this whole thing now we're not going to be mentioning like camp names specifically because this goes out to a lot of people Mm -hmm. and if if a lot of people decide to join i don't want them kind of harassing this camp because it's very much a family Mm -hmm. i think one of them used the word really and i liked it it's found family so it's people that they've decided that they really want to kind of match their lives with and they want to take care of each other and um and it, it that was the vibe and throughout everything also, this event has been going on for like 49 years. Right. Most of like the the older population, they've been going to it since they were young. Yep. They've raised their children in it. Yep. So this whole community is like, when they say found family, they mean found family of like their lives. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> like they, they are super, super close knit. Like mm-hmm. we go into, we're invited to this camp because it's the camp that our friend was part of. Mm-hmm. Um, just to kind of say hi and stuff. And they let us stay for dinner. Which they have amazing dinner. Yeah, first. I want to eat there every day. No, every year they build, they build. This, this is why anybody who watches this show, because they're the craftiest people, just freaking under the sun. So every year they just they build a clay oven so they just can make, make their own bread. bread. They want to make fresh bread. So they, they're like, did you bring that? No, just built it. Yep, they build a whole clay oven. Um, they're roasting things over a fire with a big old spit. Like slow they're, roasting throughout the entire yeah. day. Yeah. Uh, meanwhile, you're in this literal great hall with like banners and flags like and stuff. Like their heraldry. Yeah. Um, and and there are candles lit and there's like meat and stuff. And they have what? What do they call her? Like the the drunkologist. Yeah, 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 yeah the drunkologist. They have the one person that's in charge of cocktails. They, yep. they they have like barrels of drink, like mead and, and cider. That they've and stuff. made themselves. That they've made themselves, and they have they've made a. Nice 
enough that when one runs out, they're like, oh, okay. And, and they bring one. another <laughs> barrel of what they've made themselves. It was so good, it too. It was so good. It was really, really good. So that that was the vibe. Like, immediately they, they welcomed us in, not into just, like, their tenth little area, but, like, straight up their family structure. They, 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 there was... they invited us into their stories, into their community, yeah. like, into their, like, inside jokes and everything in between yeah so and, and i think this is going to be the kind of the the, the linchpin the, the the thread i want to tie throughout this entire thing is the explanation that this isn't just like uh let's go into a field and pretend to be a thing it isn't like a larp like isn't it isn't a game it's, no it's, to me it almost felt like we went to a different country for sure and this was like this is their lives and we were accepted into it and it's all yeah. established and welcomed and and they have their own like just like tens of years of, of inside jokes and everything. Yep, and, uh, and, and I think you kind of nailed it with that too, where it, it is very much like being a different country in that it is so big. <laughs> It's so big. It's broken up into like sections. They have like the dells, the highlands, the prairie, yeah. the bog. Which each one has its own culture completely. Uh -huh. Like the this kind of the Serengeti area where we were, which is kind of big and open. It gets real hot. Which that's is why it's called Serengeti. Regalia. But that's kind of like a really quiet family. It's it's closer to the battlefields. I think it's it's a good place where like a lot of the bigger established camps just kind of like yeah are there. Mm -hmm. um, then you go down as a south? There's a lake <clears throat> and then the area around that is called the bog and it's shaded and there's a bunch of camps just like in between the trees sometimes hanging in the trees. Uh -huh. There were some that were on stilts. Yeah, it's um, really cool. And we didn't even explore all the bog but that's where the parties happen. And when we say <laughs> parties, like ragers. So, I want I want to get this picture out of your head right now. Whenever like popular culture does things like Ren Fest or like LARP events or anything mm -hmm. like that, there's this kind of weird bend to put them like really like nerdy and whatever. Um, somehow make them seem like they're not a, a, a cool group to be with. You have never been to a party like the way these people freaking party. So like the first night we went to damn. the party of the the parties of the the Lost Boys, which yeah. is like a culture like. A bunch of guys wanted to have parties, and it's been so long that they've grown up, and the younger generation has taken up the mantle of the Lost Boys. <laughs> yeah, generations of people who just generations party. Of, so, <laughs> one of the reasons why the parties are so good is because everyone makes their own liquor. And then because like they don't want they don't have like liquor license and stuff like that and also just because they want to share the party. They don't sell it. Yeah. They give it away. You go to every party, they just give you liquor. And they just they, they play music and they, they dance yeah. and they, they have these big fires and yeah. drum circles. There's, yeah, a bonfire, a drum circle with like good there's really skilled people are uh -huh. playing. So it is like jamming and, in there. And, and with and, the bog, like we went out with a group of people from the camp and like we just walked. And almost every single camp was having a party. Like, not a part, like a rager. Like, it was, at one point, we had left the party we were at mm -hmm. to kind of walk. Um, and we we came around to another one with a big fire. And, a, and I thought we came back to the same party. I was like, oh, we circled back around. And then and I really like, got to look at it. I'm like, nope, this is just another freaking rager of a party. Like the there's so much in the bog that it, like people seem to have set up their own taverns where like the, this is where An we serve the liquor. actual tavern. Like it looks like a bar front and people are just giving away liquor. I mean, obviously they're safe about it. Like yeah, they, 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 they ID they, they, you, yeah. they make sure that's good. And as far as safe too, back to like <laughs> how nice people are. Immediately we were going to go to the bog. And these people who didn't know us were like, you're part of, they called us the amoeba. You're yeah, part of the, the amoeba. Yeah, the amoeba goes apart and comes back again. You have to always have a buddy in the amoeba. Uh -huh. uh, if you leave the amoeba, you have to let the amoeba know. Mm -hmm. When the amoeba moves, you have to move. Yep. Like, there was rules. Yeah. So you're in the woods in just pitch black except for these the lights and these huge bonfires that are the parties. Uh -huh. So if you're by yourself or whatever, it's real easy to get turned around and we didn't have no, the lay of no, the land at To all. be fair... Like when we were going, they're like, even if you lose us, just go to a, to any sober person and they yeah. will help you. And it's true. It's 100% Because true. like yeah. when we were at the parties, I just kind of started going up to random groups of people and introducing myself. <laughs> and every single one of them, they turned toward me and they talked to me as if I was, they, they knew me and I was already their friend. Mm -hmm. With genuinely threaded through this entire event is the atmosphere of if you are there you are already part of the family that's it we had we end up so because of those types of ragers we had a little morning ritual where we get up 
So you're able to buy a, a specific so kind of mug. The, the boar and the boar. Oh, what's it called? Beast and the boar. Um, you're able to buy a specific mug, and there's a limited quantity of them. But so get them fast. Yeah. You buy them. They are worth it. They are so worth it. It's like 30 bucks for a month, but you get free drinks for the rest of the Yeah, the event. you get free coffee, lemonade, and iced tea. Right. So we would get up in the morning, we'd stumble out of the tent, we'd get a coffee, and we'd And our shower stuff, and we'd wander to the showers, which was past the beast and the boar. Yep. Get our coffee in case there was a line, which there never was. No, because we always got up earlier than most people, I think. And then we get to the shower, and we take a shower and just drink our coffee yeah, in yeah, the like, shower. <laughs> we, originally, we got the coffee before the shower, because we thought, as long as we're going to wait in line, we might as well drink our coffee. But there was never a line, so we're just in the shower just drinking. drinking a coffee. And we get out of the shower still with half a coffee. Like, yeah. we had set points along the way. We'd go, hold. <laughs> drink the coffee. And keep then going. keep walking. <laughs> but, yeah, so the, there's, there's definite, um, like, crazy ragers. And, but no matter what, mm -hmm. I don't think there was ever one point in time where I felt, un well, there's one point in time where I felt unsafe. Only one. Mm -hmm. So we decided to go for what's called watch. With, with watch, you can get into a golf cart, which I've never driven a golf cart before. Let's start. Yes, right? I like this story. So we've got into a, a golf cart, and because we are who we are, we wanted to get good footage for you. You drive around the entire place. It was recommended to us by the people who helped us set our tent up for the weather to go right. take watch right. so that we learn the area. Right. It was not recommended that we do it with two new people. It was supposed to be like one person who knows what they're doing and one person who's new. Yeah, Dude. we went to pick up the golf cart. We're like, this is our first pension. They're like, ooh. And they're like, this is our first SCA event. And they're like, ooh. <laughs> and we're like, good luck. <laughs> they were really helpful. Yeah. But they gave us one particular piece of advice. So there is one camp, kind of way up apart from everybody else's camp, who are very, they, they, I think they model themselves after Gore. A, a, Gorn. A, a Gore. A, it's, a, it's a set of novels that's real dark. But They like, are called the Two Chucks. Yeah. We were warned. That if if you drive into their territory with the golf cart, you will be kidnapped. The wheels will be taken off of the golf cart. And they will walk it down. Like, <laughs> go miles. Like, walk it down. Miles down to the area it comes from <laughs> on their <laughs> shoulders. We're like, why don't they just wheel it? And I was like, that's not the point. Yeah. They will take the wheels off <laughs> and then they will return. This the is golf. our prey. <laughs> and then we'll have to send someone to like unkidnap you uh, which i mean so it, it's it's like intense it's like for a newcomer but it is all in good fun i met yeah. i met a um a storekeep who had been kidnapped she's like i was kidnapped by them once she goes they were awesome she goes i mean my camp had to buy me back with two boxes of whiskey but they were awesome <laughs> um well, but yeah like we had we looped around their territory a bunch of times and every time we're like as somebody who's standing guard, because people actually stand guard at their camps. Like, there are certain places I saw people who just were guarding their camps or whatever. Mm -hmm. And like, like, he was just standing at the gate, just like watching us go by. <laughs> I said, I waved, and he just goes, <laughs> I'm like, all right. <laughs> We're just eyes ahead. Um, <laughs> don't look at the don't, don't, don't look at the man. <laughs> we wanted to get good footage for you of the mm. camp, of, of the whole place, if we could. We went on the uh, one of the earliest shifts like that there was sunlight. 5 a.m. Which means we had to get up at 4 a.m. Yeah. so we could shower and then be there. But it was just us. So we're driving by this dude at 5 a.m. as the sun's just coming up and he's like... We're also driving by like... So there's... there's Because it's such a long running event and yep. it's so big. There's so much culture embedded in it. Like we're driving and we just drive by this guy who's like wearing a huge like furred mask of a three-headed wolf like a, like or a, something. No, it's like a, it was a goat, like a Baphomet. Yeah, like a Baphomet thing. kind of, like just walking, shirtless with like a like like yeah. deer leg, like yeah, goat legs, legs or whatever. There, yeah. And he's just he's just walking down the street, and we just drive by, <laughs> and then we at pass, five a.m. At five a.m. <laughs> we walk by another person, and he's like, "Did you see the monster?" <laughs> <laughs> That shit crazy. <laughs> and it's, good. There's just a bunch of those little things that are woven into that world. Yeah, there's so many details. And and um, as far as like, so you've got all those different sections. You've got like, what is it? Top of the world is the top the, the, of the, the, the hill, hill. Which right? is a surprisingly tall hill. It's but really I say that hill. as someone who's not familiar with it's hills. A, it's, a, it's a tall hill. Um, but uh, aside from all that, right in the center of it, you have this merchant's quarter, which mm -hmm. is huge. There's like... 207 merchants that come to there 
And that's not counting, like, the fully functional restaurants they have there as well. Yeah. Like, there was, like, seven restaurants, and yeah. then there was, like, three or four just coffee shops as well. Just all over. <laughs> if you like the stuff I do on this channel and you're following me because you like all the kind of crafts we do go or whatever. Those merchants. Go to, yo, you want to go to those merchants. It is just a, a concentrated, like, take my money just place. Just 200 people who have perfected all of the crafts that we fumble with yeah well and that's another thing so like when you're staying with people you're getting to know them almost everybody we bumped into was a crafter of some sort or had some kind of really deep knowledge of a specific skill like we were talking about how interesting it must be to grow up in that society because you're exposed to like like there we went to dance classes we mm -hmm. we saw people being taught how to like tan leather yep. we've like glass all, blowing glass we took blowing, archery like tablet weaving archery mm -hmm. there's so much skills and that's not even talking about like the history lessons right. and then like the deeper topics the people who grow up in that society must grow up to be such well-rounded yeah. skilled individuals people. well and it kind of shows because like almost everybody we bumped into was super into intelligent yeah like, advanced degrees and things and like they, they were just really but, but also just really well-rounded interesting to talk mm -hmm. to people almost everybody we talked to and had like they were all so kind yeah ex yeah they would be willing to tell you a story or if you asked them i asked one of the people who were at the camp that was helping us about he was an armorer built armor i've been wanting to build armor on this channel for a while so i started asking him questions wealth of knowledge that just started like a good hour and a half conversation about different kind of metals to use you know different mistakes to kind of avoid when you're like doing what it. actual steps like what was actually necessary for you to get started yeah really really interesting then he started talking about the history of like how different armors were created yep. Well, and that's another thing, because a lot of the, the people there, they're very into the history of it. So mm -hmm. what one of them explained to me, and I, I can't, I don't want to paint with too broad a brush, but I know a lot of them do this. The person they're embodying, it's not a character because it's them, but they're the person whose feet they want to kind of step in and see what it was like to live as somebody like that at that time. They'll pick a time period mm -hmm. and they'll try to make everything as period correct to that person as possible. And they, they... Learn everything there is to know about like what kind of clothing they wore. Why did they did they use these particular textiles? You know mm -hmm. what type of cuts were in fashion at that time, um, and and they just walking pieces of art everywhere you go. You're like, oh my god, that looks Even so good. The tents and the the clothing yeah. and like everything is a piece of art. Fantastic. Yeah, it was a beautiful was place. On the, on the topic of kind of like the peep, like it's. A lot of them, like the, the, the names and everything they choose, it's genuinely not a character. No. It's themselves. Right. But expressed in this world. Right. It, it never felt like I, we were in a LARP and people were playing at something. Sure. It always felt like we were in a genuine community where this is just who they were. Right. And it never felt like awkward or forced no. or anything. Like... We, we were very worried when we were going in that you needed to be like period accurate and have like everything re like good or whatever and in the end like it's appreciated it is but it's 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 not what it's about it's not about pretending to be this it's right. about experiencing it yeah. learning how to do these different things and then like growing into this community right. which is very much kind of on brand for this channel because it, it is very much about learning exactly how to do all these things and perfecting these certain mm -hmm. things so you know it, you're there doing it under the auspice of like i want to know how people lived in the 14th century or something right so they they're doing it on, with that framework but they're still then learning all the skills one would need to do the stuff we like to do leather crafting mm -hmm. right um sewing their own clothing like the, just doing it with the limited amount of resources and tools and the type of cuts they had then. Yeah, but there is um, no sense of like in character or out of character. No. It just is. Yeah. Like you It's who you are. Yeah. yeah. Like it's it's a it's a thing that you don't need to be afraid of to get into because there's no learning curve. There's nothing. You can nope. go with basically like a t shirt cut kinda like a tunic or just some money and buy stuff at the merchants. Yeah. We saw some people that were walking around in jeans. It's like it's appreciated the effort to put into to look the part. Right. But it's like you can go and just experience it. And I guarantee you want to. Like if you went there and you didn't go with anything, you're like, I don't feel too comfortable dressing up mm -hmm. or whatever. I'm going to feel it out. 
you'll go there and you'll see everybody else and how welcoming and how relaxed it is. And you'll go to the vendors and see how dope some of this clothing mm -hmm. is. And you're like, you know what? I'm going to buy this badass tunic and just, oh, whatever. I'll wrap also, a little belt around Also, a lot it. of their stuff is designed to be cool in heat. And yes. it's like, their clothes are functional. Yeah, that is the one thing I will say is a detractant from Benzik. It was hot. Like and humid. Yeah, really, really. And it's weird your body gets used to it after a while. Like I the first day was miserable for me, like uncomfortable. And the second half of the second day or whatever. But then I we kinda... adjusted so we we learned that most people kind of they do morning stuff uh. and then like the the noon times is when everyone either goes like they have a nap. Like yep. we got recommended to do watch then because you're in a golf cart driving around with the wind. Yep. Um it's it's when people do their relaxing things with mm -hmm. like the breeze and everything. Uh, and then they do like afternoon stuff. Yep. So so like in that same vein, you start forming these little routines of the things that you do to go through this world. Like we had a little routine of whatever it got really hot and it made us tired. There's like multiple ice cream stores around. Yeah. Um, that have really good like shakes and ice cream. So good. They have this orange cream school shake. <sighs> Kill for one right now. They had like a caramel macchiato one that was like it was so good. But like multiple times we would just like, I want ice cream. And you just go get ice cream. Go get also, ice. you're walking everywhere. Yeah, so like the a ice lot cream of walking. Worth it. You burn it off. It's so funny because we'd meet multiple people and it was like, I want ice cream. They're like, we just got ice cream. <laughs> yeah. We were joking kind of ahead of time while we were walking around because you start to notice other people's routines first, right? Mm -hmm. So then it's almost like you're playing Skyrim and they're NPCs. Like every day this guy, one of the merchants comes up before his shop opens, he sits on a little bench and he smokes a pipe. Every morning we walked by him, he was there, he was doing his thing. Yeah, we, we were right? walking by shuffling to the showers. Yep, uh, and it, it wasn't long until I realized to other people, we are the we are there because we had such a routine. We're shuffling with our coffee to the showers. Every once in a while we stop, drink. <laughs> Exactly. the same places. Place. Like straight up NPCs. It was terrible. Um, I do want to shout out. Uh, so one of the really cool setups, there was mm -hmm. a guy we'd walk by and he was kind of an NPC to us at first. Um, and he's a, he's a fan of the show. He's actually he said hi. He recognized mm -hmm. us. Um, but we saw him sitting at was was basically like a sepulcher, like a, an altar, right? It looked like... Um, like almost a tomb. Yeah. Yeah. It looked like a tomb, right? And actually it had a big awning. It said Memento Mori in mm -hmm. front of it or whatever. And he'd just be kind of sitting on the bench in front of it. And it... Honestly, looked like he was maybe like a priest of some sort, he or was like praying to it. Praying to it. And right? every day we walked by, we're like, "Why is he always just staring at yeah. this?" Yeah. And we figured the tent next to him was his, and he would just stare at it. Um, and then eventually, I'm like, "I'm gonna go ask him." Yeah. So, we, we walked by to ask him, and it turns out that 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 the altar altar it's his tent. <laughs> yeah. So he's he's part of a community that understands that it's a big jump to go from like the nylon cheaper camping tents to like the more expensive canvas tents. So they're exploring different avenues of which to like bridge that gap. So he made this like wooden box tent that has like yeah. a door that slides open. It's got storage at the bottom and then it's his bed. It was really, it's really we're, cool. We're like, can we take pictures? That's really cool. Yeah, it was really, really cool. Um, so things like that. And, and a lot of people did that where they set up, if you have like an RV or something or a trailer, mm -hmm. they made it look like a castle or or like a, a, yeah, like a like monastery the, of the some level sort. Of Everness at the place for when it came to their crafts and making really things cool. look cool it was awesome. Yeah. I want to get into as well, just make sure we cover it. I know it's going to be a long video, but um, the the battles. Because a lot of people, mm -hmm. you know, not probably a pretty small percentage of people actually participate in the battles. Everybody likes to watch them, but the knights and stuff, there's, there's a small group who want to get in just the heaviest armor. Um, like, I cannot emphasize, their armor is massive. Like, I held you, one of their helmets, mm -hmm. and it was so heavy. <laughs> like, you you think you know what metal armor on a person looks like. It's not that. No, yeah. Think, like, three times bigger. It's huge. Like, all of them, to me, standing in their presence, was like the mountain on Game of Thrones. They were all massive. Huge. Like, they don't even need weapons. They could kill me just by walking at Yeah, they at just me. Run, run at you, and just the sheer momentum of them in armor like, will if, flatten you. If you go to Pensick for any other reason than just to stand next to one of them while they're in full armor. It's funny, because one of them, like, a couple of them we were mm. sharing camp with, and, like, they're just like, being around them, they're just regular, they're regular people, regular people. And then they show people. up and they're massive. And you're like, what happened to you? <laughs> you're just huge. And then they don't play with how they hit each other. Like they beat the hell out because of each other. Because they're wearing so much it armor. Is like they, they don't have, I don't think they have like 
sharp blades that they can actually cut in the armor, yeah. but they have like blunted, they hit hard. Made out of wood, like big rattan mm. things that they're like, wham! So, um, we went to one battle, the Battle of the 30, yeah. which is supposed to be like one of their most intense it's battles. It's 30 on 30. They I thought go it was at so 30 other. and then 15 on 15. Uh, it, it doesn't no, matter. Yeah. It, it's it's uh, a large group against large, large group. group. But it's 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 just small enough that they can, they don't use like big like group tactics, but it's just big enough that you you can't really like focus one on one. So it's just this all out brawl of intensity. Yeah. Um, and I I was watching it, and one person kind of gets like pushed off the field, and he's kind of out. So he stands there, and he's just standing, staring straight ahead, not moving, not reacting, still in full armor, and he just goes. I think I broke my thumb. <laughs> <laughs> and the guy next to him is like, do you want help taking your gauntlet off? He's like, still not moving, not reacting. Nope, I'll just tape it when I get back to camp. <laughs> and then a few minutes pass. And he's like, definitely broke my thumb. <laughs> <laughs> and it's really cool because the way they did this particular oh, thing. Oh, yeah, the the... The, the, the... the thing you had to give. So I forget what it's called. Um, like a, no, the it's ransom. Like a ransom. Yeah, it's yeah. a ransom. So basically when you go down or whatever, they had to hit you for this particular rule set. I think they had to hit you in the head three times, or if you fell, they can just capture you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so all the knights who are going to compete, they've set aside ahead of time something valuable to Like them. it has to be valuable to their station. A few of the ones I knew was like a really nice dagger, yeah. uh, like a, a bottle of, of like homemade wine yeah. that's been like, like aging. So basically... It's genuinely valuable things. Yeah, and basically you have to ransom yourself. You are mm. now in this, this person has captured you. This person has you. So you give them the, the thing to, to buy your freedom back, basically. Mm -hmm. uh, which is so cool. And the gifts they were giving each other was great. And after the melee, yeah. someone just runs up and is like, hey, you captured me. Here is this thing. And, and, and a lot of times they'd be like, not necessary. And they're like, it is my honor to give this to you. <laughs> yeah. Like, it's such a cool really tradition cool. and they all take yeah. such pride in it and that's the thing too we had a good talk with kind of um one of the guys who were like essential to, to hanging out with mm -hmm. us and helping us out um and he was very much breaking down like you know we take like like nightly oaths and stuff or whatever but it's not it's not a game like we genuinely try to live by the things that and they're really really high values and they're really mm -hmm. good things that to if that's what you use to model your life after you're gonna have a really good life like yeah. it's really good it Again, it goes back to that thing of like, it's not a game to them. It is mm -hmm. genuinely how they live their life. Right. Like, sure, like, they're not always dressed up in no. the medieval yeah. garb, but they, a lot of the knights genuinely live their life by those oaths in their day to day life. And I think it's cool in an, an event like Pensick because you get all these people who have that type of point of view and have that lifestyle, but aren't able to as openly express it in the world, just because the society we live in mm -hmm. deems certain things like weird or counterculture, right? It's perfectly okay if you stand by a water cooler and talk all day long about sports, you wear all your sports gear, you talk about all the latest scores, like that's acceptable. But if you go the other way and you want to talk about, you know, a, a particular historical event that happened in a war and how to craft certain things and, you know, about knights fighting and stuff, you're weird. It's, it's strange. So when, at, when you're at this event where you're surrounded by like tens of thousands of people, who are into what you're into, that must be so freeing. Like, yeah. that's probably why there it is such this incredible vibe there, because everybody's just like, finally. And it's, like, and I can it's, just... am it's amazing how, like, much it is like a community of that same knowledge. Like, uh, there was one point where one person was like, oh, did you hear the news? They, they think they found Genghis Khan's, like, like tomb. <laughs> and everybody's and everyone, like, really? Everyone's like, really? Like, it was, it was a thing. Yeah. And, and, like, they all have this intricate connection of interests and knowledge in this whole community that if you, if it's, it touches on anything that you enjoy, it's so worth it. Yeah, it's really, I, I can't, honestly, I can't recommend it enough. Um, yeah, not even just Pensick, but just the community in general. Yeah, like for sure. Every, the, entire, the way the SCA works is the entire world is split up into kingdoms and into smaller baronies and territories and stuff. And you can get together with your local community uh, and like go learn how to shoot a bow or learn all... like the, It's just a thing of teaching you mm -hmm. all of these different techniques and giving you a community to be part of. Learn combat. If you're into like a martial arts or something mm -hmm. like that, like... These guys legit, like we or were talking. Or learn dancing. Or learn dancing, yeah. Um, they, they take so much pride in learning, not just like 
the top surface of these things. They go really yeah, deep. Yeah, why, why it was done that way, the different, like, variations of what they, like, because they have, let's go off of historical documents and stuff, so a right. lot of times it's not a clear answer. And they all know the different contentions. They're like, I know that the, there's not a clear contention on this. This is the different ways it can uh, be done. Well, that's a cool thing, too, because I feel like a lot of it, too, is this giant experiment where mm -hmm. there isn't really clear reasons. Like that's why it's an anachronism. Yeah, so they, they, they take it and they're like, cool, this is what these manuscripts might say, right? Let's try it. And in trying it, they're like, the way I'm trying it now, no mm. human being would be comfortable in this all the time. So they must have done something different because this is not how a or, human would human, right? Even right? Like, like the fact that like, um, like um, um, the Americas have a different climate. Sometimes it's hotter or right. colder or whatever. So then they adapt it. Like they use those techniques, but they're like, this is how it worked for them. This is how it works for me. Right. And they, they, they grow old techniques in yeah. new ways. I, it's, it's really, really interesting. I, 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 I can get the vibe of it being super intimidating to jump into. I mean, it was our first. We were intimidated to jump into it. Yeah, and, and don't over-prepare or think that you're nah. going to be able to do everything. Like, you look at the class schedules, and they have, like, hundreds of classes a day. We went to, like, we had time for, like, two. And I can't even tell you what we did with the rest of the time. A lot of it was just exploring. Yeah, it's uh, We, we did go enough. to a few events. Yep. Like, to the, the party during the first night, while we were just wandering around, a guy comes up to us and just is like, you are going to a Viking luau. A Viking luau. And it turns so out metal. he was the king of one of the kingdoms, and he was throwing a Viking luau, which is an event they do every year. Yeah. Enough that people have made full Viking garb out of like luau, luau prints. <laughs> <laughs> and we show up, and they put lays on us, and they have Mai Tais, and it's just this whole luau yeah. scene. So after like the luau, we also went to this one that was called the Blue Feather, yeah, I think. Yeah, it was like this big... Bank, like it was a like this big banquet auction ball yeah, thing, I, which we went to after the luau, so everyone was wearing like wearing fancy clothing, and we showed up in grass skirts. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I mean, also their outfits were on point. Like yeah. everybody there looks so. Good. And most of them had handmade them, and it was so good that a lot of times we had to go up and be like, "You look amazing." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I I believe it was held for like the LGBTQ plus community. We didn't stay there very long because it was the night before we had to leave. Right. But there was like art laid out of like different like pottery and everything like yeah. things that have been made to be auctioned yeah that they but, were holding like a raffle or something yeah the only reason i bring that up was the fact that like everything at pensick was so inclusive um i mean even to the point where like while we're at that up on the stage there mm -hmm. was there was a um doing someone doing sign language to make sure that anybody was hearing impaired but was also mm -hmm. having fun or like clapping like instead of clapping, yeah we were clapping you know this. making sure so it was it was just probably the most inclusive space I've ever seen in my life. Anything that you're kind of into, um, especially uh -huh. if you're into like the stuff we're into here. I mean, if you are somebody who's just like, yeah, sports and all that kind of stuff, which is cool. Honestly, that can transfer really well to the battles. Yeah, go like, to the battles. They have the different kingdoms or your teams. Yeah, you want to see some 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 like, people like uh, legit wanna... stuff. Uh, yeah, they go to the battles. It's impressive what impressive. these people do. Impressive. Really impressive. And even like down to the archery, like the shots they're doing. There's one, the clout, which was what like a hundred or something mm -hmm. like that it was such a long shot these people were able to make with a bow like mm -hmm. even when we like so we a friend that we made there gave us an archery lesson found us bows yeah and took us out to 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 train and we were shooting the little baby targets yeah and meanwhile <laughs> these people were shooting targets so far that they had to point up like to the sky to get them. Yeah. Like, and, and they, they were, did. They were it. <laughs> yeah. Like, they when really the person good. who took us out, who would shoot the clout, uh, was shooting our targets, his arrows were like right next to each other every yeah. single pop, time. Pop, 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 and pop. ours were like, where did that go? Yeah. <laughs> we're like, we're just going to go behind the target and grab it. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. We're just going to go find our shame. <laughs> but even then, like, when we were at the archer range, every single archer there was like, Oh, like here's some tips of the trade, or like yeah, that was so much better. You're really improving, yeah. and we're just like. It's true. Random you. people next to us was like, "Know what I found? Actually, if you do it like this, that mm -hmm. it takes a little bit more tension off your elbow and stuff." And we're like, "Oh, thanks." You try it, and they're right because of course they are. They've been doing this for yeah. years. I guess all of that to say, we had a really great time. Yeah, I'm. I'm sad we couldn't stay longer. Yeah. I'm. We came up with so many things of like how to improve our tent and how, like ways like because we found that. 
when you camp for that long, having a sense of home and comfort so and cl like something someplace clean and, and warm to come back to was so important, which is why the camp that kind of in, like adopted us became almost like that. a little cornerstone of safety and warmth and like belonging. It's, it was interesting with that. And, and a big, you know who you are is a huge thank you. Mm -hmm. Like I can't even thank you enough. It's incredible yeah, what you, you did. I think um, you, like they made that event they for us. They made that event for us. And exactly what you said, there was, there was definite times where we'd be out and about. And even though I always felt safe, it's still overwhelming. Like you're out and it's it's dark and there's fires and there are people who are there's just partying just and there's so much going on that you you come back and there's this great hall where there's like quiet family moments happening mm -hmm. and very intimate little conversations happening and they 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 look up and they smile when they see you and they, they tell you to come in and there's warm lighting um, and it's just such a safe little place. A little bubble of safety. Yeah, that it just, it felt so good to come back to. I, I highly recommend if you do go by yourself, like, go talk to people and yeah, introduce like they, yourself. Yeah, they have a Facebook, they have, yeah. like, uh, different, like, community forums. Like, introduce yourself to the community or try to get in touch with your local kingdom before you go. Mm -hmm. uh, even if not, talk to people genuinely like like we mentioned almost every single person we talk to we're like this is our camp come find us, come find us. even we're just fun. walking down the street yeah. you'll have people run up to you and they're like we're giving out free ice cream come with yeah. me <laughs> some little boy come over and goes want free ice cream i'm like you're a stranger <laughs> and he's like yeah but we have free ice cream i'm like lead the way little boy <laughs> and we go into this huge encampment and, and they, they had ice cream that they've made by hand with, the with, day before yeah. with hand cranks yeah like <laughs> It was so cool. <laughs> that was on the way to Luau, so we're just like in grass skirts walking into like into the main yeah. part of the city. And some little urchin comes running up to us, like, "You want some ice cream, <laughs> sir?" <laughs> <laughs> There's so much going on that you can like. You get there, and honestly, for your first time, probably don't have that much to plan to do. Just Go to, with just the experience flow, it. Explore. Yeah. <laughs> find people do the things that they introduce you with that's what we did mm -hmm. and honestly it never felt like there was like a moment where we weren't doing something interesting yeah. except maybe napping in the heat yeah if anything there were moments where we we're like we need to take a break because i'm so <laughs> tired and it's so hot mm -hmm. that i just want to be away for a little bit um but yeah it, it's one of those things that go into it with an open mind and go into it specifically to have an adventure yeah especially the first time go into it just to absorb it mm -hmm. and then once you have that experience then you like there's so many things i want to do next time oh yeah like for the sure the, we, we only went to a few classes i want to go to so many more classes the they, class were, they were so good yeah yeah so go to pensive yeah. <laughs> get a meat on a stick get a meat on a stick <laughs> and, a, and a mug from for the, sure from the beast in the boar i was for checking sure. to get, see if we yeah. had it for sure get the mug <laughs> get the mug go to shower with your coffee in the morning <laughs> oh we're, we're gonna start a shower tradition just coffee with them that, that'd be great and talk to people honestly it was one of the most fun events that i've ever gone to yeah um and and without like trying like you go to a larp it's very much trying to be what a larp is yeah and, you're, and like, you're playing a game yeah this isn't a game it's just a, an experience to be had and no matter what even if this isn't the kind of world you're very like particularly interested in or whatever it is so worth the experience and it's so varied like you'll yeah. find something for sure 100 percent. so yeah don't be afraid of it definitely go check it out we give it like Two very enthusiastic thumbs Two up. Two very enthusiastic <laughs> and maybe a knight's broken thumb. <laughs> yeah, honestly. Um, so I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, want to give it some of that like it, love, and don't forget to subscribe. Um, and I don't know, reach out to your local SCA and see what that's like. Yeah, yeah, tell them Skilltree sent you. Yeah, oh, please do tell them Skilltree sent you. It'd be interesting to see how much of that happens. Um, special shout out to all of the, all of you, all the subscribers who actually found us there. There was mm -hmm. a bunch of you um, who, who honestly made the time really fun. Um, so we appreciate you just for being here and for helping us out as well. I hope, so. I hope the coffin guy found my, my offering. <laughs> I left him an offering. <laughs> um, so yeah, thank you all. Um, and until next time. Keep leveling up, you. Thank you for making it to the end screen. The YouTube algorithm loves when you do, and it's a great way to support this channel. Another great way to support this channel is by joining these incredible people who give to our Patreon. Thanks to their incredible generosity, we're able to keep this bad boy running and keep leveling up our skills. Again, it means the world to me that you're willing to help support this channel. So yeah, thank you for everything you do for us. If you'd like to join their noble ranks, why don't you consider joining our Patreon, link in the description below. Or you can support us by clicking on one of these videos here that YouTube thinks you'd like. Just either of them, they're both good, I'm pretty sure.
I guess, maybe. I will, I will never buy her a chair. It doesn't matter how many Patreons we get. <sighs> <laughs> <laughs>